welcome to day 13 of the Crafty Advent series. Today's video is adding a voiceover to um, a video I did a while back using some of the Pebio Fantasy paints. Um, and I really love using these paints and I feel like um, I thought I should add uh, one of the card videos I've done uh, using them into the Advent series just so that one of them had a voiceover on it so I could tell you my uh, tips on how to use the paints as well. I did write out in a blog post in the beginning but I can't remember which blog post that was on now but anyway. Um, so here I'm just cutting out um, some of these die cuts. This is the um, Cascading Butterflies die from Sue Wilson and Creative Expressions. I think it's still available and if you cut both the pieces together you get um, this sort of like, like outline for all the different butterflies, which is perfect for when you're using paints like this, or whether you're using the technique where you like fill in with nouveau crystal glaze and you sprinkle in the shimmer powders and stuff. Um, it's a really great kind of dye because it instantly and really easily gives you that sort of well to put the paints in. So I'm cutting out multiples of it so that I can stack them up together. And then later on, I will just use the inside die to cut the apertures out of my um, main panel for the front of the card. And the great thing um, about this die set is, um, even though it's like four separate butterflies, well, five in the actual die set, but I'm using four of them, um, because they're all joined on one die, it makes lining it up so much easier, like... Um, Another video that will be coming up in this advent series, um, you'll see I did something similar, but I used separate dies, so I had to fiddle around with it to get them to go behind the apertures. But this die set makes it really easy, and there is also a heart version of it as well, and an octagon version I think too. I haven't got either of them, but I'm pretty sure they do do both, so I will link them below if I remember. Um, so I've also cut one of just the solid die, and now I'm going to build up my three layers. Um, of the outside pieces to create the kind of well for the paints to sit in. Um, you can make this as thick or as thin as you want. You, you don't have to use three die cuts, you could just use one and be a bit more careful. But you these paints, they're like oil based and they kind of, when you put them on, they seem thicker but they dry down. So you kind of want a bigger well to begin with but then it will dry back down to be flatter once it is dry. Um, now this is my top tip, these paints are oil paints so they're going to seep right through cardstock so to help um, stop that from happening I've just taken some cheap glue, was just reduced at my local store but any glue you have and a paintbrush and I'm just painting over the whole thing to kind of um, coat it and make it a non-porous surface so that the oil paints aren't going to leak straight through the card, they're going to sit inside the card. Because the first one of these I did, it was a Christmas tree, um, and I left it to dry. Luckily I had left it on a piece of paper, but it, loads of it had seeped out from the back of the card, because I hadn't done that trick then, because I obviously then thought, okay, I'm going to have to make it non-porous, so it works. But anyway, so you saw me mixing just now, um, I just tipped in a little bit of the deep blue vitrail with some of the lightning medium just to make a lighter colour and now I'm stirring up this one which is called Moonstone and it's a prism paint. The prism and the moon, um, both of them you really need to stir really 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 well because it's the, all of the mica that's in the oil paint um, that creates the cool effect so you need to make sure everything is mixed up into it to get the effects and you see me there that was a new one that I'd got um, while making this video. So I put some in the lid and then I let it dry. So then easily in, like, in my drawer I can see exactly uh, what paint it is and what finish it has to it as well. So I'm also using... Um, that, that one's a Caribbean blue prism. Then I'm going to use the glitter medium, which is the one I just stirred there as well. And that looks like it is the silver moon two and I think I might use the metal blue moon as well. Um, again they need um, a good amount of mixing um, because oil paints kind of um, separate and um, if you get these paints and you've not used them for a while you'll see that there's a whole layer of oil that's separated out of them and you want to make sure you really mix it up to like emulsify the solution and get everything working together so you're going to get the proper results. 
um, that the paints are supposed to give. So for this butterfly, I'm filling it with that um, lightened um, vitriol. Vitriol is the glass paint, and the colours are really highly pigmented. So I um, mixed it with a lightening medium, which is also in the same range, to make it a, a paler colour. And then uh, first you saw me drop in some of the metal blue moon paint. And when you put moon paint on top of the vitriol, it gives a cool lacy effect. And then I've also dropped in some of the turquoise moon, I think, as well there, and then the glitter medium, and now I'm dotting in some of the prism paint. Um, because this is such a small area, you're not going to see the full effect of the prism paint, which gives that kind of honeycomb look. Um, but I like to use a cocktail stick and just dab in lots of areas of different of the different types of paints, just to give a cool look that you're not going to be able to achieve any other way, really. But um, say you only bought um a few of these like you can get you can get them in a smaller pack that has um small bottles or you can buy the big bottles separately um i've got a mixture of both of them but if you were starting out and you you knew you wanted to do say the christmas uh christmas tree idea and make your christmas cards you could get a uh, green vitriol the lightning medium the sparkle medium and then like um a gold or a green moon so you could just add the vitriol first and put the moon on top to give that cool lacing effect and then drip in some of the glitter medium too which would look brilliant so I think this is prism that I'm adding in now um, and I've added quite a lot of that to try and get that um, cool honeycomb effect and then that is some of the silver prism that I'm adding on top and then I'm just adding in some of the vitriol too because if you add them in different orders um, you get different reactions too. I'll put in the description a link to um, two or three videos by um, Joggles, which is a channel I really love watching. Um, she really inspired me to uh, get these paints and try them out. Um, and she uh, said that a, a great thing to do is these things that she was calling reaction chips. So you drop down um, the different types of paints on top of each other in different orders to see how they would react which is great to keep as like um, something to refer back to in case you've forgotten. You might not have used them for a while and then, you know, you've got those little things to nudge your memory and remind you of how the paints work together. Um, and they do keep moving for quite a long time um, after you've dropped them in. They're going to keep moving and some will sink because they're heavier and, you know, all sorts of different things are going to happen. Um, so you can keep adding to it. I think they stop moving maybe after like 45 minutes. And here I've sped up the footage. I'd sped it up to 62 times the speed. You saw it moving a lot at the beginning. It stopped moving so much now. Um, but it, it really does react over a long amount of time. I think I recorded for maybe like 20 minutes um, and then sped it up really quickly to show you that cool effect. Um, this is now dry. And you want to leave it to dry on a horizontal surface, obviously, so the paint doesn't drip out of the, the wells. Um, and you want to leave it to dry for, like, at least a week. Because because these are oil paints, you know oil paint takes a long time to dry. Um, and so you want to make sure it's really, really dry. Um, and then once I finished the card, actually, I left it for, like, another week, just lying flat on the table, just to make sure that everything was dry. So these are kind of great cards to do in batches really because you can get all of that die cutting done at the beginning and then you can have fun with the paints and then just leave them for a week and then finish off the cards so um i always seem to run out of time and don't get a chance to do multiples of them but that would be a, a good kind of batch card to do that gives a really really cool effect that people are going to wonder how you did it so i've uh, what I said earlier, I've die cut that panel and then cut the butterflies out of it. And to stop the last butterfly from cutting, um, I've just put some pieces of paper and card underneath it and then like tried to not put the top cutting plate over that part so it wouldn't cut. And I was just using a, a burnishing tool to try and flatten out the card um, near there just to get rid of any sort of indentation that that fifth butterfly had left. I think it was on day 10 of this series I, when I did the acrylic pouring I did the same thing with that butterfly dye um, and to camouflage where that fifth butterfly had indented a bit I did emboss that one so you could do that too if you wanted to 
And now just stamping on a sentiment. This is an Avery L stamp set. I'm not sure if it's available anymore. I just love that mixture of a really scripty word with a sort of block capital word. It looks really nice. And that fit just perfectly in that portion of the card as well. So I'm just going to get the card blank ready. Um, I tend to, my favourite size of stitched rectangle is 4 inches by 5 and a quarter inches. So I actually have little marks on my um, paper trimmer so I know exactly where to cut my card blank down to to make it much easier. And now I'm just going to stick this piece behind the aperture piece. And you see what I mean here? That was just so easy to put the top aperture over the top of the piece we've already done. Whereas if you were using separate butterfly dies, you'd have to um, really think about lining them up or cutting the back piece into separate pieces so you could get the alignment right. But with this die, it makes it so much easier. Then to level up um, the like three thickness of card for doing the butterfly pieces, I'm just adding foam, 3D foam to the rest of the areas. So when I stick it on my card blank, um, it's all going to be about the same level then. And I'm going to add a bit of glue behind the butterflies just to make sure they stay stuck down nicely. I really love the look of these paints, they just look so cool. I do really want to do some more of them. I was going to do more this year when it was um, hotter so I could have the window open. Because they're oil paints, they kind of have quite a strong smell to them. Um, but obviously I just ran out of time and didn't get a chance to. But uh, So now I'm just using some Nouveau Crystal Drops. I can never remember the name of this deep blue one. I don't think it's Dazzling Blue, I think that's the sparkling version, but I'll, I'll put a little annotation on the screen. Um, but anyway, so I just had some pre-made ones from earlier, and then this is just a few close-ups of um, the cool paints as well. And that's just a few of the ones that I use. That's what the two sizes of paints look like in that picture. Um, so I hope this was interesting, seeing you probably, lots of you probably haven't seen these paints before, so I hope it was interesting and you enjoyed day 13 of the Crafty Advent series. Thank you so much for watching, see you tomorrow, bye!